So guys, the major November update is coming tomorrow, being the 17th of November. What this will do is add the new weapon into the game, the Void Gauntlet, and many, many other things. Now, it's an update we've already covered, but we're going to go through the must-knows right here again today for those who missed it. How's it going, guys? My name's DPJ, and to give back to you guys, I'm giving away 10,000 marks of fortune. To be in with a chance of win them, simply drop a like on this video, leave a comment down below, make sure you are subbed with notifications turned on. Winners will be announced at the end of the week, good luck. Okay, so the great, the big, the massive November update to the one we've been waiting for for quite a while now, that introduces the Void Gauntlet, a new weapon, as well as new enemies, new loot and much much more, is coming, they say, the 17th of November, which is indeed tomorrow. So let's get into the, well, you, if you want to read through the whole thing, you'll see it on screen, I mean there's a ton of info here if you do want to pause the video, or just link the post in the video description if you do want to click on that, you can do as you please. But okay, so the new Void Gauntlet is coming guys. Now you may have tested this within the public uh, test realm, uh, no, I did. It was a pretty good. I cannot wait for it. I'm not going to lie two years. But this is arriving with this update. You can see a little bit of information about this on screen now. Like I said, if you want to pause the video and read through it, you can be my guest. Do that. We're also getting new enemies. The Rangian Knights, I believe that's pronounced. I'm probably wrong. I usually am. Again, information about these guys you can see on screen now. Like I said, we have covered all this information in a previous video. I don't feel the need to go through all again because we'll be here all damn day. They've also added a few things within the world experience. They added the starter zone visual variety and improvements. But one thing here I didn't actually notice before. I don't think they actually announced this before. I could have been wrong. But to run faster on roads. While running on roads, you will now receive a movement bonus. Movement speed bonus of 10% while traveling on roads. The move speed bonus will not trigger unless the player has been running for 3 seconds and they are on a road. The movement bonus will be cancelled if their player engages in combat in any way such as dodging, blocking, attacking or being hit with a debuff. So while other MMOs out there complaining about maps being too big, get mounts, we get faster legs. Amazing. They've also added a plus 10% luck bonus and a plus 30% gathering luck bonus to players flagged for PvP. Okay, so that's pretty cool, not gonna lie. You can also see a few other uh, notable bug fixes on screen now. So we have new quests, they say, uh, new PvP faction missions added, control points, seize control of a fort, intercept, defeat enemy faction members and collect their tiers, and war camp loot, retrieve hidden plans at an enemy's war camp. These will obviously be picked up at your faction or representative. Syndicate for the win, by the way, people. We also have guys changes to many, many weapons. I mean, Warhammer you can see on screen now, uh, what they're actually changing with this. Uh, they say our goal with some of these changes below is to make the power of Juggernaut Weapon Mastery Tree stand out a little bit more from the Crowd Crusher Tree and funnel some of the power of shock waves running to the armor breakers rend craziness guys so on to the life staff the purpose of the life staff adjustments are to move some of the healing power into the light and medium equipped loads while reducing some of the power of the tanky healing builds we also want to make it easier to properly target and heal the correct group members change as you can see on the screen now hatchet guys we wanted to buff the throw and axe tree to make it more useful. Buff the infected throw ability to make it more viable as an anti-healing ability and improve the buffering for heavy attacks to make them more consistent to use. We also worked to resolve issues that resulted in missed hits. Okay, so next up we have the great axe and you can see those changes on the screen now. We don't give a description of what's actually gone down here. The bow changes you can see on screen now. I mean, I barely see anybody using the bow. I mean, I may try it out uh, when I level up my rapier and switch classes, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so onto the sword. Our main goal of the sword slash shield updates were to make the leaping strike ability feel better and to improve the buffering for heavy attacks 
to make them more consistent. Those changes go as you can see on screen now. Okay, so the fire staff. We've updated the fire staff to reduce some of the effectiveness of standard attacks due to how powerful they felt in comparison to certain abilities and updated some abilities to feel more impactful. Now I am a fire staff user and to be honest I feel some of these changes were probably for the most part needed. Okay so the spear. Our goal was to buff and adjust some of the lesser used abilities to make a wider selection of abilities feel viable. I've actually used this spear for quite a while and actually liked it. I think it felt quite good. Definitely quite powerful and quick so you know the changes you can see on the screen now. On to the ice gauntlet which is my well, actually the first weapon I got to a level 20. So I'm looking forward to the void gauntlet too. It's just something about gauntlets guys. Our goal with the ice gauntlet was to tone down the effectiveness of some of the maxed out combinations of abilities while still maintaining their individual usefulness. Okay, and them changes you can see on screen now. Next up guys, we have the Rapier. Fixed an issue where Tondor, Flourish and Fletch uh, had their cooldown begin one frame before the hitbox would appear. This resulted in the abilities going on cooldown if the attack was interrupted early, even if it did not hit. Those changes you can see on screen now guys. Now we have the musket. Now to me the musket, before we even get into this, is by far the worst weapon in this game. Hopefully these changes here are decent enough. Similar to the balance updates of other weapons, our goal was to buff and adjust some of the lesser used abilities to make a wider selection of abilities feel viable. And we can see for the most part guys, this has received an amazing buff. Now I may have to try out the musket, I'm not even gonna lie. Now there are also many, many changes to expeditions and more like i said though guys if you do want to read through these you can okay so on to economy progression and loot faction change cooldown has been reduced to 60 days down from 120 repair kit weight has been reduced from 2.0 to 0.1 we felt 2.0 was too heavy and 0.1 is not very heavy at all it should be easy to keep a few of the at the ready in your back pocket Added the item chunk of consecrated iron to the top rank of the faction shop for all factions. These are used to craft a resilient perk for arm items. Onto the economy. All trading posts have been linked. Both the listing tax and purchase tax will be paid to the territory where the buy or sell order was listed. Items listed in sell orders that expire are returned to the settlement from which they were posted. It is no longer possible to place items out in trading posts for 28 days. The maximum is 14 days. Reduce durability loss from PvP deaths by 10%. Reduce the quantity of honey gain from a period by 50%. And the amount of milk from cows by 65%. Honey trees are not affected by this change. We made this change because the volume of milk and honey in the wild is higher than our initial estimates. The bees and cows are happy about this change. As in taxes are now due every 7 days instead of 5 days. No changes to costs, so players will gain 2 days of housing time without an increase to their taxes. On screen they can see progression changes as well as trade skill changes. Okay, so now we have loot and rewards. Added several new named items as special drops from named knights found in the world. Knights that are quest targets don't have special drops. Added a new style of weapons that drop from the knight enemy type. Rook's defense tower shield now has a tower shield appearance instead of a kite shield appearance. Added a set of weapons designed by the participants of the Battle for New World event. These weapons are tier 5 and capable of being legendary if they roll a gear score of 600. Now a few of the changes on the screen now, like I said if you do want to pause the video and read through them all. We have notable bug fixes, we have streamer mode updates, salvage and repair and notable bugs. But yes guys, this is the November update, it is absolutely massive and apparently it's arriving tomorrow the 17th of November and what I am seeing is downtime will be approximately 4 hours and starts at 5am PT, 8am ET and 2pm CET whatever that time is in the UK I have absolutely no idea but there we have it guys for another new world video if you enjoyed it leaving a like it really helps out if you're new around here and want to see more new world be sure to subscribe and if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one.